If I had to name a very good clone of a great game, it would have to be Vice Project Doom for the NES. This is another one of those underrated NES games like Shatterhand. As you can tell, the game is an action-packed platformer with the same routine as others, but this game plays quite differently. It's not your normal side-scroller, as it's more than what you would expect. It definitely has that familiar feel, but the game also packs driving stages that are similar to Spy Hunter, and rail shooting stages where you enter first-person mode like Bayou Billy. Gee, three game styles in one? That's a much better deal than Action 52. Okay. Okay, let's not mention that again ever. For the game's plot, your detective Quinn Hart, a member of the Vice Unit who is assigned to investigate Beta, a company that develops military and electronic equipment run by an alien race that have been harboring on Earth for centuries in secrecy. They developed a substance called Gel that was meant as food for their race, but has become a drug for humans and is now somehow being sold throughout the illegal drugs and paraphernalia markets. After the disappearance of his partner Reese, Hart goes out alone to get to the bottom of the entire operation, with a lot more to the truth of his being. So he's got his hands pretty tied here. The gameplay of Doom is heavily similar to Ninja Gaiden. It has the same pacing, same strategy, similar enemies, and similar cinematic cutscenes. As mentioned, the game has three types of levels. Your normal side-scrolling levels, top-down drivers, and first-person rail shooters. The platformers are pretty basic. You go from point A to B, getting from one area to another. You'll be encountered by weird enemies, which some of them look like failed experiments. To make the deja vu feeling of Ninja Gaiden more obvious, they're the friggin' birds that I know you all miss so much. They're just as annoying here as they are in Gaiden. However, every other enemy will prove to be troublesome for you as you advance further in. Every time you kill an enemy, they always drop something, whether it's coins, bullets, health, etc. You're given three weapons to fight off these annoyances, but the enemies can still be irritating regardless. Your primary weapon is this unique blade, and of course it's like Ryu's sword. You can attack and run at the same time with your blade, but you'll sometimes find yourself stopping to attack just to be safe. And yes, you are timed for each level, so don't be too safe. Almost every enemy you come across takes one hit from your blade to kill, and it's pretty powerful once you can handle the running and attacking simultaneously. The gun, on the other hand, is not so reliable. It is effective, but the bullets travel halfway across the screen instead of all the way, but there are times where the pistol can become very useful despite its limited range. The last weapon at your disposal are the grenades. They travel pretty far and can deal some heavy damage, but when Hart throws them, they travel in a wide arc pattern, and you have to be at just the right distance to throw these grenades in order to hit your mark, as long as the enemies aren't moving spastically. Even with these weapons, it doesn't ease much of the difficulty in these segments. They're fast pacing and challenging, while at the same time fun with promising and satisfying rewards. The next segment is the driving levels. The gameplay in these parts are similar to Spy Hunter with enemy attack patterns bearing obvious resemblance to those in Galaga. You have to drive on an insanely long highway at rapid speeds and meet a boss at the end. You'll have some shit in your merrily drive like other drivers who I don't think pose any threat but can get in your way along with barrels and traffic cones. On the lower right hand corner are three gears to shift with gear 1 being slow and gear 3 being fast. But it feels so fast in these segments no matter what gear you're on. And with all the tight corners and shit coming at you, you'll most likely spin out a dozen times. But it's not so bad once you get the hang of the driving. The last segment is the rail shootings where you enter a first person perspective to take out all of the enemies with your gun, and to be honest, this is my least favorite part of the game. The enemies will be constantly running around on screen and popping shots at you, and your crosshair isn't the fastest at catching up. Just like the side-scrolling and driving segments, the enemies will drop items upon being killed, but the items here are picked up for you automatically more than half the time, so you don't need to waste your bullets trying to grab them. And no, you can't use the zapper in this case, since the game is not compatible with it, which will make it kind of hard for you to move fast on the crosshair, and even when you get your target on sight, you'll either hit them or miss somehow. Not to mention that you need to watch your ammunition, otherwise you'll run out of bullets before you know it. You also have grenades at your disposal that will wipe out all enemies on screen. Upon completing these segments, you'll either get a cutscene to keep the story progressing, or you'll enter a boss battle, which starts out easy at first, but when you get near the end, they can get ridiculously vicious, especially the doppelganger of Heart, which will take more outsmarting moves and less mindless charging. If you take your time while beating the time, such a paradox, you shouldn't have so much trouble, but then again, that could easily be a flat-out lie. 
The visual representation of the graphics is marvelous. They remind me of Shatterhand. Hart himself looks very straight edge, and the variety of enemies are solidly well done. The background in the first side-scrolling level looks pretty gnarly, especially for NES, and the rest of the levels are greatly detailed and superb. My one complaint with the graphics is that sometimes you can mistake objects that look like they're in the background, but as you jump to them, you find out that they have platforms. You can also mistake things that wouldn't do any harm, but can hurt you like these vines and crystals. Not to mention the fan blades. Also, in the driving sequences, the roads can get somewhat repetitive, but it isn't so much of a complaint since you're on a highway. The cutscenes are also well done. Again, similar to Ninja Gaiden. They do a very great job of pervading the convoluted story so you won't feel confused. The visual entirely is splendid and you can tell just by looking at the cityscape in the first side-scrolling level that a lot of work was put into the game. The controls are tight and very responsive. There's no loose ends with the platformers as it all feels fluent. You move at a very good pace. Sure, Hart may not be faster than Ryu, but he sure could get the job done. The B and A button do the works, and the select button lets you switch between the weapons you have. My favorite part of the controls here is that you can actually duck and run at the same time. Seriously, how many other NES games do you know of that allow you to duck and run simultaneously? This was a huge innovation at the time. The jumping to me feels a bit too tight, especially when you're jumping from one base to another to get over a pit. The driving stages let you move anywhere within the confined space of the highway, and the A button lets you switch between gears. I think my one gripe here is that you have to repeatedly tap the B button to fire more bullets from your car, which I prefer to hold the B button instead. However, it's all good. The rail shooting controls are not bad, but the movement of the crosshair is a bit slow and you'll have some trouble catching up to avoid being hit. So the controls here may not be as smooth as the other two segments, but it could have been worse. So the controls are very good, but that doesn't mean this game will be kind to you. The difficulty? Oh my god, did they jack up the intensity on this son of a bitch. In fact, I dare say it's harder than Shatterhand. It may not be brutally difficult where it's impossible to play, but that doesn't mean it isn't challenging. The enemy AI is not something to mock here, as they seem smarter than your average Joe, especially the relentless birds and the friggin' panthers. In fact, there's a level where they literally have a panther coming straight at you before you take the first step, and the fact that the enemies respawn just adds more to the aggravation. It feels like all the time they're more annoying than they should be, which can lead to cheap kills with trickery terrain and hazards to overcome. Do I also need to mention that when you take damage, you'll get knocked backwards, which has always been a pet peeve of mine in gaming. It's also another one of those games where some of the bosses are pushovers compared to the enemies. What is it with these obscure games that have bosses inferior to the primary bad guys you fight? You are given unlimited continues and a good checkpoint system, which is extremely helpful for bosses that you have trouble fighting and nailing their patterns. The only boss I had so much trouble beating is the first form of the final boss, and I swear it literally took me about 50 times to beat this asshole. Likewise with its final form, which isn't as intense, but the pressure is still there. The difficulty is almost adaptable once you know what to do and how careful you need to be, and it's also enjoyable at the same time. The music, in full honesty, I have to look the other way. The soundtrack sounds very grainy and abrasive, that it feels more obnoxious and exhilarating. It also sounds a bit grunge, that it makes you wonder what the conductor's inspirations for these tunes were. They may not be terrible, but they aren't up to par with what I would have expected. Not to mention that the sound effects can collide with the music on more occasions than you think. Don't get me wrong. A few pieces of the music sounds pretty nice, but they're far from perfect and could have used more work. With all that said, this game is definitely awesome, and I highly recommend it. It's got enough action to keep you playing with promising rewards awaiting on the other side. And since this game was featured on Nintendo Power, including having its own cover on the issue, it makes you wonder why it's so obscure. I think the reason being is the same as Shatterhand, aside from being released late. An unattractive box art cover, and its alternative cover didn't do better. Regardless, Vice Project Doom is nearly flawless and well worth your time checking out. It's an awesome ride to catch, just don't expect seatbelts to be your saving grace. Thanks for watching, I'm Riley Sky. see you later.
Ha, you get it? 